Hey everyone, I'm Stefan and today we're gonna have a look at slit scans in Houdini. The special thing about this effect is that a slit scan doesn't show an object in space, but rather how an object moves over time, which creates these really weird and beautiful distortions. I know this sounds a bit abstract, so let's first have a quick look how this technique works in practice. So the first thing that we need is some sort of animation. In this case I have this animation of some moving flowers. And you might have noticed that it's quite a lot of frames. In my case I have 1080 frames because I'm working at a 1080 by 1080 resolution. And in the end one single frame will become one pixel in the resulting slit scan. So what I tend to do usually is maybe try to render a quarter of this and then just stretching it out to the full range with something like optical flow so you can kind of interpolate all these in between frames. But once you have that it's important to render out uh, this animation as individual frames with a UDIM number at the end. So what you get is an image sequence, in this case I have all of these rendered out as EXR frames, starting at 1001 and then counting up. And I will get back to that in a second, why this is important. And here I have a little visualizer setup for Houdini. So basically on the left side right here we have all the individual frames of our animation and on the right we have the resulting slit scan. And basically what's happening is that on each frame we are sampling one line of pixels and we do that for every single frame. And if we take all of these lines of pixels and we stack them on top of each other we will get a slit scan image. So we can see different areas of our image, for example the small flower here, corresponding to similar looking areas in our slit scan. And all of this is also animated, so if we scrub through the timeline we can see if we move the sample lines around, we can kind of create this interesting looking distortion effect in our slit scan. And again, what this means, basically what we're seeing right here is not just one frame, but it's all the 1080 frames at once, just viewed from a single line in space. Back in 2024 I had the chance to present an earlier version of this technique at of Barcelona as part of our XK Studio talk Morphing Reality and although the setup was technically kind of interesting there was quite a lot of overhead because everything was rendered with karma in the end which is not the fastest way to do it and since then I optimized all of this quite a bit which is also thanks to the help of Jakob Ringler, who by the way built this really cool, more like a time-based uh, slit scan effect. So definitely check that one out as well if you're interested. And also if you want to know more about the history or the general technique behind slit scans, I can really recommend this video by Filmmaker IQ, who does a really good job at explaining how all of this works. But enough talking, let's jump back into Houdini. In Houdini, the first thing I want to do is drop down a Geonode and dive right in. And I want to start with a simple grid. So this will be essentially the geometry that we are going to render. I want to set the orientation to the xy plane, make the size 2 by 2, which just makes it a bit easier to sample this into cops later on. And I want to set the rows and columns to the resolution that I have in the image. In my case I have a 1080 by 1080 resolution, so I'll set this number right here. Okay, and the basic idea is I have all of these textures right here, which have this number at the end, starting from 1001 and counting up to 1002, 1003, and so on. And this is basically a UDIM tag. And what this means is, if we switch to the UV view, pressing space and 5, we can kind of see this right here is kind of your typical UV square that you might work with. But each of these textures with the number at the end will refer to a different square. So 1001 refers to the default square, 1002 to the one right next to it, 1003 to the one right next to that one, and so on. So basically what that means is if we find a way to split our UVs so that it occupies multiple of these squares, we can sample data from multiple of our images at once. And this is exactly what we need for this kind of setup. So to do that, I'm gonna start with a line and I want to set the length of the line to 0.99. This just helps to avoid artifacts at the edges. And I want to set the number of points to 1080 as well. If you want, you can also right click on one of these parameters and say copy parameter and go in here and say paste relative references. So these two values are linked. So if you change the resolution here, this one will also update. 
Then I want to move this line to this kind of imaginary UV position in world space. For this, I'll use a match size right here. And all I want to do here is change the position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So now our line sits in this kind of first UV square, if you want to call it like that. Now I want to copy the line. So for this, I'm going to use a copy and transform. And I want to copy it 10 times in the x direction, like so. And basically how this UDIM layout works is you have 10 textures in the X direction. And once you have more, you just jump back to the next row and continue from there. So we need a second copy and transform. This time we'll copy in the Y direction. And the number of copies is the number of images that we have. So we still have this copied from before. So we can right click here and say paste relative references and just divide this number by 10 like so. So now we have all of these lines here. And if we middle click on this copy node, we can see indeed the number of primitives matches our number of images. All right. So now how do we get this world space position into a UV attribute for this grid? For this, we can use a attribute copy node, wire the grid into the first input and the copy into the second input. And the attribute that we want to copy is P, position. We don't want to copy it as a position attribute, but instead we want to give it a new name and call it UV. So our grid doesn't change visually, but if we jump to the UV view, we can see now our grid is occupying multiple these UV squares right here. Okay, so now let's get our image data onto this grid. For this, I'm gonna use a trip from map like so. In here, I want to make sure this color space is set to linear. I want to use UDIMS. And in this file path right here, I can select the texture that I want to use. Usually this is set to frame range. So just make sure it's set to UDIM right here and select it. And if everything works correctly, you should have a file path that looks something like this with this UDIM tag, UDIM expression at the end. And in our case, yes, that did work. And we can see our slit scan right here. Nice, but currently this is not moving. This is just a static frame. And this is because we are only sampling our image in one spot. In our case, the middle of our UV square. If we want to animate this, we can move our sampling line from left to right to change where our image is sampled from. So I'm gonna insert a transform node after the match size. And in here, I want to animate this X direction from 0 0.25 on the first frame. So I alt click here to set a keyframe, jump to the last frame. And here I wanna set a value of minus 0.35 and set a keyframe again, which resulted in an interesting looking animation in this case. Also, I wanna press V to bring up the animation editor and set this interpolation here to linear. And I also like to label this node green. So I know I have some keyframes going on here. And now if we look at the attribute for map again, we can see that yes, our slit scan is indeed animated. And maybe just for now, I'll set this back to sRGB. So this gets a bit brighter like so. All right, but currently our slit scan is only sampled in the vertical direction. We can also change this to sample it horizontally. For that, we'll need two transform nodes. The first one goes after this grid right here. And in here, I wanna change the Y rotation to 180 and the Z rotation to minus 90 like so. And this just makes sure that point number zero is always the bottom left corner of the grid like this. And the second transform goes after our animation here. Maybe let's color these in a different color. So we know they are kind of linked together. And in here, all I want to do is change the Z rotation to minus 90 and also change the pivot to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And this just makes sure that our rotation is not happening on the world origin, but rather at the center of this square right here. Okay, so now we have this horizontal sampling. So now if we go to our slit scan, we can see a slightly different result, which I think looks a bit more interesting in this case. And by having both of these nodes enabled or disabled, we can toggle between a vertical or horizontal slit scan. Great. So now let's actually turn this into a image sequence with cops. For this, I'm gonna drop down a null and call this out. Then let's drop down a cop net right here. And I also want to set this to the right resolution here. So we can again go in here and say paste relative reference right here. So now this also has a 1080 by 1080 resolution. And actually before I jump in, I want to copy this null 
control C. And in here, I want to use a sub import, check this use external sub and paste in the path of the null right here, which brings in our geometry. Now, currently, this is still geo. So if we zoom in, we can kind of see our individual polygons. And to turn this into an image, we need a rasterized geo like so and wire this in. And the attribute that I want to rasterize is called CD, color diffuse, and this is a RGB value. And now I want to change this color space back to raw. By the way, if you don't have this bar right here, you can bring this up by going to perspective and checking the correction toolbar here. So now this is kind of the correct color I expect for this image. And to write this out, we can use a ROP image output. And let's make this bigger and drag in the node that we want to export. And all I want to change here is I want to set the color space to raw because this is already an sRGB. I want to render a frame range and I also would like to set the EXR compression to WAH just helps to keep the file size on disk at lower. So this is our entire setup done. So thanks again to Intagma for having me and all that's left to say is cheers and goodbye. Hey Chris here. I hope you've enjoyed watching Stefan's tutorial as much as we did. This has been a long time in the making and we're so happy to finally have him on the show as well. And if you want to help us bring in more voices from the industry, even from XK Studio, please consider becoming a patron of ours. Also, big thanks going out to all our current patrons, without you and Tagma would not be possible. And if you want more camera-inspired tutorials, you might also enjoy these videos about data moshing and rolling shutter in Houdini.